Okay, here we go. Sorry about being late. Had a few issues with getting Twitch to kind of hook up to my Streamlabs. So, <laughs> thankfully we got it all straightened out. So, here we go. It's nice to see everyone. Glad to see you're all here. And I have to admit, I'm really freaking nervous. <laughs> this is... This is my first time doing this, so I'm brand new, kind of trying to figure out where things are going and what I want to do with the channel. <laughs> but it's good to see the chat here. Glad to see you all wanted to come in and say hi. <laughs> anyway, kind of let's get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> it's been... This has been a long time coming. Been trying to prepare for this for months now with getting my model set up, getting all my assets in place, getting my Twitch and Twitter built up. But, well, we're finally here. And it's good to finally be able to say that, hey, I actually went on and was able to stream. Anyway, let's go ahead and get down into it. Do a little bit about me. My name is Alden Fudry. And yes, it is pronounced like that. It's a bit of a portmanteau of the French name Fudra and the Japanese name Rai, both of which mean lightning or storm, which seems pretty appropriate. I mean, I am a Thunderbird, so... As for my age, well, in terms of like what you humans kind of say, I'm about 751 compared to others of my type, I'm kind of about equivalent to 34, 35 in human age. So I'm still in the prime of my life. Still got a few hundred more years to go before I start to kind of decline start to lose my spark. <laughs> As for my height, I am about 178 centimeters for those of you in the Europe and Asia that use the metric system. For those of you in America, I'm about 5'10", give or take about a half an inch. Depends on who's doing the measuring. As I said, I am a Thunderbird. If you guys start acting up, I will zap you. I will do the Pikachu. Bzz. As for my job, at the moment I am currently the Warden of Knowledge. I am basically monitoring the largest repository of information and knowledge in the world, here on the surface world. I was originally from the floating island kingdom of Laputa, but we'll get into that later. It's a little bit of a story and some history behind that. Speaking of which, now that I thought about it, uh, is my audio okay? I want to make sure that everything is good to go. According to my Streamlabs, everything looks to be good to go on the audio. But it's always good to have someone kind of give me a good... Okay, thank you, Blue Misty Shadow. Very much appreciated. And as for the languages we do here, like, I do speak fluent English. I am from America, or IRL. I am learning German at the moment. That's one of the things we'll be getting into later as well. Definitely trying to learn something outside of my own home language. It's tough, though. German is tough, especially the grammar. It is so irritating. Because even the smallest little change and you say something completely different. Though I guess that's true for learning any language. Uh, anyway, a little bit about me. I was, Like I said, I was born and raised on Laputa, the floating island that is made famous by the story Gulliver's Travels. It is a real place. I 
was born and raised there. I was a bit of a bookworm. As I said, as I growing up, I was never without a book of some sort in my hands. I pretty much just hung out in the library growing up. Like, even when I was in the, serving in the uh, Lapidan Air Force back in my military days, I preferred reading books over my swordsmanship practice. I <laughs> It was never really that interesting to me, knowing how to fight. I mean, as a Thunderbird, all I got to do is just zap somebody and boop, done. But I've always been a bit of a bookworm, as I said. I've always loved learning to read. I was taught to read at a very young age by my parents. And it kind of just grew from there. And my imagination kind of just went into overdrive. Eventually, after I got out of the Lapidan Air Force, I worked my way up at the Royal Academy, and I ended up becoming a professor of history, specializing in ancient civilizations. Specifically, I was famous, made a few books, and did some research on ancient Lapidan engineering and architecture. I also fiddled around with a little bit of private investigating detective work on the side. The, Eventually, you'll, as you'll find out, that kind of came back to bite me in the rear end at some point. But I've always been a big fan of puzzles and just, I like being able to put things back together and see how they work and why they work. And it's just been something that's kind of been a trademark of mine ever since I was a kid. Even when I was little, I was always doing puzzles that were probably a little bit above my age grade. <laughs> I just liked being able to focus on something and just do whatever it took to actually get it back together. But as I said, my detective work on the side kind of just bit me in the rear end eventually. I dug a little too deep after I found out some things about the royal houses. I found a lot of evidence of corruption at the Parliament of Nobles that answered to the Lapidan King. There was some, let's just say there was some shady stuff going on. Not, not the kind of stuff that's appropriate for children, really. So, eventually the nobles kind of found out that I was poking my beak in the their business so they, in order to kind of silence me they kind of framed me for hearsay and kind of had the church deal with me as it were i was in prison tried and eventually exiled down here to the surface world and it was tough i'll admit at first i mean you humans have a much different economy and social system than we do up in the sky. So it was a bit of a trial and error trying to figure out how things worked and kind of what I needed to do to kind of survive here on the surface world. But eventually I kind of figured things out. And eventually I kind of just stumbled haphazardly on the Hall of Knowledge where the former warden was kind of nearing the end of his life he was actually a human unlike me but he kind of I guess realized just how much of a fan of books that I was and how determined I was to kind of just suss out the truth of everything and know what was going on so he kind of took me under his wing helped me get established here in the surface world, and eventually he did pass on his responsibilities as the warden to me when he eventually passed. This was a, quite a few years ago. I've been in this position for a good 250, 255 years now. So he was kind of at the end of his rope, as it were, and I've kind of just been sitting on this ever since. And it's been a little lonely, kind of sitting in the hall all by myself. So, 
I'm definitely kind of glad to be able to get out and do this streaming thing and kind of meet everyone. I'm a, I've always been a bit of a shut-in, so this is, like I said, really nerve-wracking for me. Like, even when I was in the military, I tended to kind of just keep to myself. The only people I would really interact with were my coworkers and everyone else in my unit. So, it was... I had a bit of a reputation, as it were, and that kind of didn't help when I was confined to the hall by myself for so long. But now that I've seen, like, the wonders of the internet and everything, I've kind of decided, you know what, I need to go ahead and kind of get out of my comfort zone, put myself out there and just try to meet people and make new friends. And that's kind of what I want to do here. This is not only a chance to like get out there, meet new people, but also to learn as much as I can about how things go all over the surface world and kind of figure out how you all do things. But like I said, it's great to be here. It's great to have you all here. And I'm definitely looking forward to going on this journey with all of you. <laughs> now, as far as my likes... Uh, I, basically, I'm a bit of a weeb. I kind of admit it. And as you can probably guess from my age, I am a bit of a boomer. So I've got a lot of old-fashioned kind of likes and stuff like that. Obviously, as you can tell, I like books, both reading and writing. I do have a few short stories to my name at the moment. I am currently working on a full-length novel at the moment. But it's kind of slow going with other things that have been going on in my life. But I'm definitely looking forward to getting back into that in the near future because things are finally starting to kind of just slow down for me. <laughs> I am a big fan of puns, dad jokes, just overall stupid jokes that make you laugh or groan and it's just like, oh God, why did he say that? Why? But anyway, it probably, that actually leans into another one of my likes that's going to be showing up in another slide. <laughs> I, like I said, I am a weeb. I enjoy video games a lot. Specifically, I'm a big fan of like the RPGs and the platformers. RPGs have been a mainstay of my childhood for years and years and years. <laughs> like... And to kind of reiterate the fact that I'm a boomer, the very first console that I ever played a video game on was actually, not going to lie, the original Atari system. It, as you can guess, the graphics weren't that great, but it, it was a video game and it was actually pretty fun to play the different games. I never did play the E.T. game that was so famous for nearly bringing the industry down to its knees, but from what I've heard, it was definitely something you could afford to miss. <laughs> and the first console I ever owned was the original Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES, as they call it in America, or the Famicom, as the uh, Japanese called it, or the folks at Nintendo. It was definitely fun getting to know a lot more about video games and kind of get into the lifestyle at that early age because this was back when I was just a little bit of a chick <laughs> but it was so much fun being able to play all these games I originally had as you can probably guess the original Super Mario Brothers and the Duck Hunt dual cartridge which was probably like one of the first like two in one games you could ever see if not the first and that kind of leans into one of the things that I really do not like even though it's not on this list trolls the two biggest video game trolls in all of history are in that one cartridge it's as you can you probably can guess what my number one is but the number two troll in video game history in my opinion has got to be Toad from the Mario games 
And if you think that I'm joking or if you don't agree with me, all you have to hit, hit or to be, kind of be reminded of that is, we're sorry, Mario. Your princess is in another castle. Screw you, Toad. I want the princess. I don't want you. Get out of my way. <laughs> but as you can probably guess, the number one video game troll, the dog from Duck Hunt. Your own hunting dog is the biggest freaking troll ever. The Duck Hunt, for those of you who don't know, is a bit of a old classic that kind of used a special controller that was actually shaped like a little bit of a gun. It was like a shotgun. And it worked similar to a remote from the TV. Had a little sensor that you pointed at the screen, and when you pulled the trigger, it shot out a infrared light of some sort that kind of just popped whatever was on the screen at that time. So your whole goal was to, obviously, it's called duck hunt, so your goal was to shoot the ducks. So you would kind of just have to do your best and aim this remote-style gun at the screen and pull the trigger and try to hit these ducks. And normally you only had like three shots per round of duck to try and hit it. So you had to not only be accurate, but you also had to know like when to shoot. So it was very challenging to kind of master. Easy is what a clear example of the old classic. Like easy to pick up, hard to master kind of thing. But when you were kind of a failure at it and just didn't hit the ducks, your own hunting dog would pop out of the grass and laugh at you. And that laugh was the most horrific and offensive thing I have ever heard as a child. There was eventually a, a mod or a different version of the game that was made that actually allowed you to shoot the dog itself. And I did have a chance to actually play that version of it. And <laughs> you, I gotta admit, it was really gratifying to actually just sit there and just not shoot at the ducks deliberately. So that the moment the dog popped his head out of the grass to laugh at me, kaboom! <laughs> That's what you get for laughing at me, you rap bastard! <laughs> oh god, I, I hated that dog so much. <laughs> Ugh. Memories. Gotta love them. But anyway, back to my likes. I am a huge fan of pasta. It's probably my one of my biggest comfort foods outside of the next thing on the list. It's also something that I'm very proud of in my ability to cook. Whether it's spaghetti, Alfredo, you name it. Any kind of pasta, I'm usually pretty good at actually, like, creating something edible out of it. And I've picked up a few interesting recipes over the years that I definitely enjoy. And hopefully, like, one of these days I can actually get a Discord up and running with my own server and we can actually share recipes and stuff like that on there. <laughs> But next on the list is Choco Mint. I am a huge fan of mint. That is my one friggin' weakness when it comes to, like, sweets. It's, whether it's chocolate, mint chocolate chip ice cream, like, Andy's Mints, Mint Oreos, you name it. I am a complete sucker for that. Like, I'm pretty sure that there was a, like, you know those vans where it's, like, typical or or like, don't go into the van, they'll kidnap you. I guarantee you, if they put a van out there, it could be the shadiest, most rusted out van to ever exist. If they put a sign on it that says, free mints, yeah, I'm probably going to get captured. I'm going to get kidnapped and they're going to like run off with me. Then again, I'm probably going to give them so many bad puns that they'll probably like throw me out the window or the back end of the van after like five minutes. <laughs> so... I suppose puns are good for one thing. It's a very effective defense mechanism. 
And again, as a weeb, I do enjoy anime. We'll kind of go into my favorites of the game and anime variety in a little bit. I grew up with a lot of the old classics of like the 80s and 90s is when I kind of started actually discovering anime for the first time. When it started actually like taking off, especially like outside of Japan. <laughs> there was a lot of classic anime that I do enjoy. I still enjoy them to this day from the late 80s through the mid to late 90s. A lot of you may have heard of them. Again, I am a bit of a boomer, so I'm probably kind of dating myself here, trying to figure out like what everyone actually has heard of. Because I know a lot of people kind of just follow the stuff that's popular now or that was recently popular back in the late 2000s. And then cats. I do love cats. Even though I am a bird. Thankfully, I am a big enough bird that most cats are not going to want to eat me. Plus, there's the whole shocking thing. So, kitty gets too close and wants to try to nibble on me. Just go, and, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> but I do like all animals. One thing that gets me a lot of times is if I ever do find myself out wandering and I start talking to people about animals, and, like, they'll just ask me, like, are you a dog person or a cat person? It's like, well, I prefer cats, but... And then they immediately get all defensive and offended. They're like, are you saying you don't like dogs? And I'm just sitting there going, no, you, you don't understand. I do like dogs. The thing is, I like other people's dogs. <laughs> I... I could not handle that kind of energy for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I would probably lose my mind. <laughs> but you leave for five seconds out the door. The dog is immediately like at the door, like scratching it, like, ar, 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 where'd you go? And then you come back five seconds later and the dog is jumping up and down going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I missed you so much. I love you. And then the cat, not so much. <laughs> Thankfully, the cat is a much quieter animal in most cases. I have met a few very noisy cats that just don't know when to shut up. But for the most part, if you come home after like three hours, at most the cat might get up from wherever it's sleeping and walk into the like living room or the dining room, wherever your the entrance of your house is, and they'll just look at you and just be like, "Well, what kept you? Why is my food bowl empty?" <laughs> like th this is the kind of stuff I can get behind. <laughs> Much more quiet, not as hectic. You don't have to worry about a dog jumping up on you, knocking you over, and covering you with slobber. Oh, God, the slobber. I'm not a fan of the doggy slobber. And I don't understand why a lot of people do. Like, you will see people, like, even my own family would do it at times when I was growing up. They would literally sit there and let the dogs just lick all over their faces. And I'm just sitting there. In the back of my mind, I'm going, why would you let that lick you? It's been licking its own rear end. Good Lord. Uh, I, I question some people's sanity at times, to be perfectly honest. But lastly on the list, I am a huge fan of mythology. A lot of my inspiration for some of my stories comes from ancient mythology of various cultures I've studied here on the surface world there's a lot of old japanese and norse mythology that i'm really interested in i do have a bit of knowledge of greek mythology just being able to listen to these stories read them in the way that they were kind of relevant back in those days for all those old civilizations like you had to realize these people actually believed in these myths and legends, and this was how they made sense of the world around them. So, 
knowing a civilization or a culture's myths and legends and their folk and fairy tales, that kind of gives you a lot of insight into what kind of, I guess, what kind of values they have and what it was important to them. Like, let's take a popular one. Let's take Thor, for example. Everyone knows Thor, whether it's from the ancient Norse myth or whether the Marvel character. And to be frank, the Marvel character is quite a bit different from the way he actually was in the old myths. I can get into that in a whole... I could probably talk about the differences between myths and Marvel characters for an entire stream. But we're not going to get into that too much. But back then, Thor was probably the most well-known of the Norse gods. And that was because he was considered the champion of Midgard or Earth. He was basically the champion of the common people. So it was pretty obvious that he was going to be the most talked about because you didn't have as many Nordic kings as you did the common folk. So obviously you were going to see a lot more like tales and like artifacts that were made to commemorate this god that was seen as a champion and a beacon for the little people. And so you kind of see just what values these folks had back in those days. But like I said, I can get into that for an entire stream and just yap your ear off about it. So we're kind of going to try not to do that for this first day. Let's go ahead and get into my dislikes. Uh, jalapenos. I am not a fan of jalapenos. I know a lot of people are probably going to go and uh, cry foul and be like, how dare you? What is wrong with jalapenos? Let me tell you what's wrong with jalapenos. <laughs> when I was a little chick, man, about five equivalent to a human age, my mother decided to go and do the biggest troll move possible. She decided that she was going to give me a jalapeno when I was five years old, and she told me it was a pickle. As you can probably guess, this did not go over too well in my mind or with my body. Needless to say, I very quickly learned what the difference was for a, a pickle and a jalapeno. And I have not forgotten since. I refuse to even touch the things unless it is work-related or if I'm actually, like, cooking something for somebody else that requires them. And that's not very often, thankfully. But, like I said, I just do not like jalapenos at all. And that kind of leads into the next thing. Like, overly spicy foods, I am not a fan kind of harkens back to the whole jalapeno thing and the incident with my mother but I have just not been a big fan of spicy foods like I do like some spice on my foods I'm not British to unfortunately use a stereotype but I I just don't like super spicy things I my mouth is very my taste buds are very sensitive to stuff like that so if I get something that's like super spicy like I am probably just not going to eat the rest of it it's just not something that appeals to me I couldn't understand why there are some people out there that will sit down and not even gonna try to like sugarcoat it they will sit down and take one of those super spicy peppers, the one that make a freaking jalapeno look like an onion in comparison, like the Cal Carolina Reaper or the ghost peppers, and they'll just pop that whole thing into their mouth like it's freaking candy. And I'm just sitting here watching this going, what is wrong with you? Why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> like, I have heard instances of people that have dang near died from eating those things because of how horrendously hot they are and just how much shock your body can go into from consuming something like that. So it just makes no sense to me 
like the only thing that I feel that those things should ever be used for is for like pepper spray or mace. And yeah, I'm not even gonna get into that anymore. Like, short story, I don't like spicy foods. I will put like some pepper and some other spices like on my food to give it some flavor and some kick, but not like super spicy like some of the curries are that you'll find or anything with like super hot peppers like poblanos or jalapenos or whatnot. And as far as insects, I'm not a big fan of, of a lot of insects, especially spiders and roaches. Ugh. Like, I know I'm a bird, and a bird probably eat some of these, but I'm just... Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Not at all. <laughs> I I do like some bugs. There are some that I have no problem with and will happily let them flit about me without a care in the world. Ladybugs, for example, are very... very cute. I, Despite being a guy, I do like cute things, so... <laughs> I, if you see me gushing over how cute something is on stream, that is actually rather normal for me. You would not believe the amount of stuff that I saw on Laputa that would qualify under the, like, cute enough to give a person diabetes category. So it was, it's just something that is kind of unique to me. Because most of my other compatriots back home were kind of just like, well, what? This is normal. But I'm just sitting there going, oh my god, this is so cute. I want to hug it. Bugs, though? No. N not gonna hug bugs. Nope. Like, I will let a ladybug sit on me. That is not a problem. I will let a butterfly flit around me and appreciate the beauty of it. Let's see, what's another one that I can appreciate? Uh, bees. I do like bees. A lot of people are terrified of the things, and I get that. There are a lot of people that are kind of just allergic to bees and like, cannot afford to put their health in jeopardy like that. I get that. But as far as I go, like I do like bees and will happily just let them just sit there and just fly around collecting their pollen so they can make delicious honey. I do love honey. Honey is glorious especially in tea but yes a bee i will just sit there and ignore it it'll ignore me we go on with our lives end of story and rudeness rudeness is a biggie for me that's one of my big rules for this channel in this community i do not appreciate people being rude to me outside of stream or inside so this goes towards anyone in the chat as well make sure to treat your fellow chat members with respect and just be be sure to just do common courtesy if you wouldn't want someone to say something to a member of your family you probably shouldn't say it here i do want this to be a more family friendly kind of community like i do know that there's a lot of vtubers out there from my experiences that kind of lean more towards the adult material but at the same time i do want this to be a place where everyone can enjoy themselves and have fun <laughs> so let's try to keep the rudeness to a nil level if we could that would be much appreciated and then uh, people who steal pens this is a bit of an odd one but it is something that frustrates me to no end if you steal my pin, I will find you and I will zap you. There is no if, ands, or buts about this. Like, I am not a big fan of the whole pin stealing thing. It is not something that you should do. Again, it kind of harkens back to the rudeness. It is just rude to steal somebody's pin. Just don't do it. I have repeatedly told people out in the real world, so to speak, that one of these days I am going to invent a little pin that has a little detonator inside of it. I am going to do this at one point. I, I don't care if I have to hire somebody to do it. 
<laughs> like it will have a little detonator and then it'll be connected probably via Bluetooth or some other sort of technology to one of those switch grids kind of like you would see with construction sites that use it for like flipping dynamite and it causing it to explode like the moment somebody steals my pen I'm going to pull that little string of switches out pop one up that goes to that pen and then flip the switch and then all you got to do is listen to wherever the curses are coming from and eventually they're probably going to just come back and be like, what happened to this pen? It's like, you stole my pen. What do you mean I stole your pen? Dude, the evidence is literally all over you. Don't try to deny it. <laughs> I, I can be a bit of a troll at times, whether that's at work or just in general conversation. Like, I have had instances where people just say these really dumb things or ask a really stupid question and I'll just troll them and be like, oh, okay, so that's how we're going to play, huh? Okay, time to have some fun. Okay, and as far as the rest of this list, uh, let's do it. Cold places. I do not like cold places. I am not a fan of the cold. I mean, I'm not a fan of the huge extreme heat either, but at the same time, it's like, if I had to choose between hot and cold, I'm going with hot every time because at least I can drink water and stay hydrated that way. Like the cold, it gets cold enough, your water is going to freeze and you're kind of just going to be out of luck unless you have a way to make a fire to melt it. Like people always try to say like, oh, but you can just keep adding layers to stay warm. I'm like, well, that, what good is that going to do? You, if you add so many layers that you literally cannot move, that makes no sense. It's like, yes, you can only take off layers until you kind of breach public decency laws. But at the same time, though, like, again, you can just stay hydrated and kind of keep yourself cool that way. Like, there are ways to keep yourself cool in outside of a building in the hot, in the heat that do not involve, of, like, taking off your clothes. You just got to be creative about it. And then horror. I am no fan of the horror genre. Never have been, never will be. I probably will not be doing any horror streams on this channel just because I am a bleeding coward. I am just going to admit it right there. I am a coward when it comes to horror games. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if somebody, like just popped up from behind my monitor right now, I would probably freak out and just, like, fall backwards out of my chair. That's probably how much of a coward I am. Like, my cat literally will run out of the room if I'm walking to, like, the bathroom or back into the bedroom, and she will just pop out of the bedroom and just come barreling at me, and I'll just nearly stumble and fall flat on my face. Like, it's amusing to the cat, probably. Me, not so much. But yeah, like, let's not, like, consider the horror genre when it comes to, like, make, if you, any of you have suggestions for, like, games and such, I'm probably going to ignore anything that comes from the horror genre, whether it's Silent Hill, Resident Evil, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, this might come as a shock to you, but I do have two... Uh, two little girls, two daughters, and they are with their mother at the moment. But both of my girls are big fans of Five Nights at Freddy, and I could not tell you why. Like, how in the world are you two able to, like, stand this when your dad is, like, the biggest chicken on the face of the planet? I don't get it. I mean, some people, for them, it's the thrill, but for me, like, I have family medical history that needs to be considered about this like I do have both the sides of my family have had issues with high blood pressure so I try to keep the whole thrill seeking thing to the minimum that's why I'm not a big fan of horror just outside of the whole blood ew kind of thing so let's just not go there uh, kind of going into like my favorite things 
from the anime and video game world. It's like anime. I'm a big fan of Rise of the Shield Hero. It's one of the most famous ones that people have been hyping lately, and they just started season two. I'm looking forward to the English dub of that coming out. Like, I can appreciate a good sub anime. My only problem with sub anime, with subtitles and all that, is that I don't like having to focus my attention half on reading the top the subtitles to understand what they're trying to say and keeping my eyes on the action on the in the show at the same time it's like i can multitask i just don't like to do it when i'm trying to enjoy a medium of entertainment now bafuri bafuri is probably like my top one at the moment i am a huge fan of bafuri and the com comedy elements that it portrays it's almost like it makes fun of like shows like Sword Art Online, which I've heard. I haven't seen that one yet, but I have heard like mixed things about it. I've heard a lot of people say it's like the best thing ever. And I've heard some people be like, oh, that show is so overrated. So I'm kind of mixed on whether I want to actually sit down and watch Sword Art Online. I do, one of my big anime from when I was in like high school, in my school days was Dot Hack Sign. I was a big fan of that one, and that was kind of like the precursor to these getting trapped in a video game, isekai-style animes. It was definitely like one of the originals, and I enjoyed that one a lot. It's also, like as you can see, it's probably down there on my favorite video game list as well, because originally it was a... The whole project started out as a video game from... Bandai and it kind of just evolved from there but the anime was actually pretty good bit slow at times but it was definitely interesting it got into some deep themes that I can appreciate and Trigun Trigun is a huge one from my childhood like that was probably the anime that got me into like anime that can give you a good mix of action and comedy because like it starts out really lighthearted at the beginning and if any of you have not seen Trigun I highly recommend it like it does get darker towards the end almost kind of like a Kirby game when you think about it like it starts out all cute and cuddly and oh hey let's have a good time and then by the end of it you're just like where has this gone but overall it was a very good show and I do recommend it to anyone who can appreciate a good Western themed anime. Like I honestly, I would probably rate it just as good as Cowboy Bebop for all the love and support that people give that show. Like I think Trigun was just as good as Cowboy Bebop and I will fight you on that. Uh, Studio Ghibli. I am a big fan of Studio Ghibli. Like, I do have a girlfriend, and we actually were just enjoying a Studio Ghibli movie before stream. We actually just watched Ponyo. It's been a while since I've seen that one, so it was nice to be able to sit down and actually, like, re-watch it and kind of just relive the magic. But I do love a good Studio Ghibli movie. Like, even some of the newer ones, like The Secret World of Arietti, that was a good one. Uh, Princess Kaguya was a good one. The Cat Returns. Obviously, the big ones like My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service. Those are all amazing. And if any of you have not seen any of those, you need to like get, sit down after the stream and just go watch one. Just do it. And another oldie from my childhood that I liked was Slayers. Slayers, I still haven't had a chance to sit down and watch the final two seasons that eventually came out, but I do remember binging the entire first three seasons. Slayers, Slayers Next, and Slayers Tried. Those were like some of my favorites. And it's another one that kind of mixes comedy with the action. You can probably see a theme here. Oh, thank you for the uh, follow, Punk Wolfie. Good to see you here. <laughs> but anyway, like, Slayers was definitely, like, a big favorite of mine. 
And if you want to get an idea for the kind of comedy that I enjoy, look at Lena's relationship and how she interacts with Gallery. That kind of gives you an idea of just what kind of things make me laugh and what kind of entertainment I kind of go for. It It's a good show, and it's definitely a classic that a lot of more people, especially the young ones nowadays, can probably appreciate, even if the art style does seem a little dated. <laughs> but again, I do highly recommend it. Uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Where do I even begin with this one? <laughs> this is definitely one of the premier recent animes that has come out. It just finished season two recently. I watched season one and two with my girlfriend, and we are both huge fans. Like My girlfriend is a huge fan of Kana, and I can totally appreciate that because Kana is so freaking adorable. <laughs> Like, my favorite scenes of Kana, though, are the scenes where she will, like, be watching, like, a little animal or something like that, and then she'll literally just, like, swallow it in one gulp. Like she's a freaking whale shark or something. <laughs> like, that that's comedy right there. She'll just be sitting there, she'll pick up the crab in that beach episode, and then she just, like, stuffs the entire thing in her mouth and swallows it. It's just like, wait, hold on. What did I just witness? She just ate it. But yeah, like... The Dragon Maid show is amazing. It's very comical. It's, it's one of those more recent ones that if you kind of... If you're looking for something to watch, it's definitely a goodie. Especially if you like something that's got a lot of comedy in it. Just watching the main characters interact and how they kind of deal with their problems. It's like, it's almost like a mix of an isekai and that Toru kind of gets stuck or decides to stay in the human world in a slice of life anime where they're kind of just going through their normal lives and overcoming issues as they come about. But it, it does it very well. I will say that. It's one of the better animes that kind of mix that slice of life style with fantasy and isekai and kind of all that stuff. And then uh, a recent one that we just watched was Somali and the Forest Spirit. This one is very deep. It touches on a lot of deep emotional themes of dealing with loss, of trying to find one's way and it's definitely a good show for anyone who enjoys like the fantasy style anime. If you're a fan of the fantasy genre, definitely look at uh, giving Somali and the Forest Spirit a watch. I highly recommend it to anyone. And then Konosuba, we're it's like we're only two episodes in at this point on our watch through of Konosuba, but it's already like cemented itself in my mind. Like I've seen clips of it that got me interested in the show to start with. And obviously like you've probably seen all the memes and stuff of Aqua's various like goofy faces. That's kind of how I got introduced to the show at the start with. But I'm, like I said, I'm only two episodes in, and I'm already, like, cracking up at it. Like, you just sit here, and you you don't know whether you want to feel sorry for Kazuma, or if you want to just be like, dude, you kind of did this to yourself. <laughs> you didn't even think about what you were doing when you made these decisions, and now you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this one kind of goes. And I'll probably be mentioning it later in a f later streams. And then the final anime on the list that I do love is Ruby. I need to go back through and rewatch this again to kind of get back into the story. But overall, like, Ruby is... A lot of people do not like the art style. I have had many people say that they just like cannot get into it because of the art style but 
the art style doesn't really bother me all that much. It it a very interesting style of art. I mean, it is made, I believe, by an American. Monty Ohm was the original creator of Ruby. And overall, the art style is different from traditional anime, but it's it's not really that bad, in my opinion. But easily, Yang Zhao Long is my favorite character from the show, and you can probably guess it's because she is the queen of puns. I have seen so many freaking, like, memes and comics of Yang just making these horrible puns, and the rest of the team just looking at her going, what the fluff is wrong with you? And then Yang is just sitting there with a smirk on her face or a big grin and just like, ha ha, look what I did. But yes, I can appreciate a good pun, so Yang is definitely like, when it comes to anime characters, Yang is like my spirit animal, even though she is a bit of a thrill seeker. Like, I can kind of get past that to just appreciate the level of humor that she has and that kind of how she, like, deals with her like personal issues and that's something that I can appreciate and kind of relate to on a personal basis. Now getting into video games, we've got quite a few like biggies on here that I absolutely love. My number one favorite game of all time is Octopath Traveler. It is a game that's primarily on the Switch. It is on Steam now. I I'm hoping to eventually get a capture card for my Switch so that I can actually stream this and other Switch games for you in the future. Like, as of right now, I'm kind of just restricted to Steam and uh, pulling the information from my old PS1 and PS2 games. So I will be doing some of those in the future. I kind of definitely do want to show you guys some of the retro classics from the, that era that I kind of grew up with and kind of just show you why I love them so much. But Octopath Traveler is like the, the big one, the number one RPG for me. It harkens back to that golden age of the Super Nintendo style pixel graphics. And the story, oh my god, the story is amazing. Octopath Traveler is a pure, what's the word I'm looking for? It's basically like a stand-up example of how storytelling is done right. Octopath Traveler is a game that takes all of these various characters that seemingly have absolutely no connection whatsoever... And as you progress through the game, you realize that their stories are all intertwined with each other in ways that you don't really see at the beginning. Like a couple of them you can probably see just at the start, but it doesn't become clear until the very end. Like when you clear all of the final chapters and are making your way to the final super boss, as it were, that you kind of figure out, wait hold on, these, these stories are all connected. Like, they, you go through them separately, but at the same time, they are all interconnected and interwoven in ways that make you just go, whoa, how did I miss this? And kind of moving on from that before I start gushing and turning into an Octopath fanboy, uh, the East series. I am a huge fan of the East series. I do have a few of them on steam that i will be playing at some point i might actually consider starting my streams with one of them it's between that and another game i have on steam that i want to kind of share with everyone but i am a big fan of the action rpg style like even though like the tales of series isn't on here those are some more classic games that i do like but the e series kind of that and the next one on the list are like the go-tos for me for action RPGs. Like I recently fi finished Ease 8. And I'm looking forward to starting number 9 in the near future. 
But eight was definitely a trip in terms of like the story. Ease is another one of those that does a really good job of showing just how storytelling is meant to be done. As you can see, a lot of these on this list are RPGs, so I do appreciate a good storyline in my game. It kind of like serves as a bit of escapism for me. I am, like I said, stuck in the hall kind of all the time. So being able to play these games and kind of escape to this other world and see how the people interact and how this journey goes on, that's just something that kind of resonates with me, you know? And then, speaking of worlds, the Star Ocean series, that is a huge one. It's like one of my favorite PS2 games of all time was Star Ocean Till the End of Time. Like, I never got through the post game. I never had time, and then my game disc kind of got broken on an, during an accident. So I was never able to like complete the post game, but the main storyline is good. I do want to try and get a hold of a copy of the second one, Star Ocean, the second story, because I do want to like stream that one for you guys. That probably considered widely the best of the series, and I do have uh, First Departure R on the Switch, so I am looking forward to getting. A capture card so I can actually share that one with you all as well but Star Ocean is a biggie for me like of all the video games that I've played like Star Ocean is one of the few in the science fiction genre that I can actually like appreciate just because of like not only the fantasy tie-in but also just like the story and then like next we come to like the only mobile game on the list is I guess how it started out but Azure Lane I am a history buff I was a former history professor and so being able to kind of sit there and see excuse me a second I gotta take a drink <clears throat> Ugh, allergies <laughs> gotta hate them right it's like my throat just feels so kind of stuffed up because of all the pollen in the air around here but anyway Azure Lane it's a it's a bit of a gotcha game kind of based around the old World War II storyline like your characters are all like cute sh girl or ships that have been turned into cute girls basically but at the same time though the story that you see in it and how the different factions like interact with each other and try to deal with the threat facing their world it's very intriguing and as a professor of history and as a lover of especially like military history in particular I do appreciate like the fact that they tie in some of the actual stories of the battles of World War II and especially the Pacific the and Atlantic theaters into the actual storyline of the game. It's something that kind of makes you sit there and think about like how these countries interacted with each, with each other at the time. And, and Final Fantasy, what what video game list would not be complete without Final Fantasy, especially for an RPG lover such as myself? Like, Final Fantasy is one of the the big ones, like, of all time. Final Fantasy, like, took the RPG genre and, like, sent it into the stratosphere when it first came out. It's like, I do remember playing the original Final Fantasy 1 and 2 as a child. They were both very entertaining for me. <laughs> and I played most of the ones on the PlayStation 1, like, a lot of people gush about 7 and how amazing it was and how it was, like, one of the top titles for the console as a whole. And I can see where they're coming from. The storyline is amazing. The music is fire. And 
just the the characters themselves are all unique and interesting. But for me, surprisingly enough, I actually had more fun playing eight from the PS1 titles. Like, there probably are few people that are just going to be like, what in the world is wrong with you all then? Why would you choose eight over seven? And I'm, it, for me, like, it isn't just like the storyline. Though I do like find the story more relatable despite its dealings with time travel and whatnot at the end. I'm not a huge fan of time travel stories. They tend to get a little convoluted, but Final Fantasy VIII kind of did it the a good way and didn't make it as complicated as some stories have made it out to be. But overall, I just found eight's characters to be more interesting than sevens or even nines. Like, nine was good, especially if you're a fan of, like, stories with a lot of political intrigue and such. And eight has that as well, but eight, you're kind of just focused on not just the political entry, but also trying to discover the character's past. And for me, as a history professor, that kind of resonates with my mind and just makes me think, wait, I can actually understand this. I've, I've actually been doing some recent digging into my own family history from what r little records I was ever actually able to find. And it's just fascinating to be able to look back and see where you came from and eight kind of exemplifies that and then kirby oh boy good old kirby the most lovable pink marshmallow of all time murderous monster and before you guys start like getting all up in my grill about that think about it kirby is the mortal enemy of an all-you-can-eat buffet he could literally swallow the entire restaurant and just walk away without a care, despite the fact that he's only eight inches tall. If, like, I've done a lot of, I've played a lot of Kirby games in my day, and we just, my girlfriend and I just finished the main storyline of Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I've seen so many people streaming that one, I probably will not do cover it on this stream just because of how overdone it is. But it was a fun game, and it it did kind of stick to the whole typical st Kirby storyline. Everything, like I said earlier, it starts out all cute and cuddly, and everything is all happy. Yay, we're going to help this person. And then later on, it gets really dark and creepy, and you're just sitting there going, what am I witnessing? Why? Why is it like this? <laughs> How did something so cute and cuddly turn into something so nightmare-inducing? And if you think I'm joking, look at a lot of the, especially the most recent Kirby games. Like, Star Allies, Forgotten Land. <laughs> like, oh god, if you're playing Forgotten Land right now, once you get to the final boss, you're just going to be sitting there like, uh, well, I'm going to be seeing that in my nightmares in the future. Thanks. Thanks, Nintendo. But yes, Kirby's a very near and dear series to my heart. It's it's a classic. I play. I remember playing the original. Like, I do still occasionally, like, pick it up on my Switch from the old NES uh, emulator. That's always fun to kind of just pick that up, even though the controls are still a little wonky with it. But Kirby was definitely one of the the big Nintendo icons out there. Like, of the major Nintendo characters, like Kirby is probably my favorite just because it's a family-friendly option, despite its dark undertones at the end of like every game like it's still a family friendly and easy to pick up series that anybody can enjoy and the platforming is really not that difficult though forgotten land with its transition to 3d does have its moments where it's kind of kind of glitchy at times 
I guess not so much glitchy as just you're not used to doing this in a Kirby game, so you think that you're making the right distance for the jump, and then you realize you overshot your like point of contact, and you fall into the pit. On the bright side, though, at least in Forgotten Land, if you fall into a pit, you don't immediately die. That is one thing I can appreciate. Because when in every other Kirby game that I've played, if you fall into a pit, boop, you're dead. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's like Mega Man falling on a spike, I swear to God. The moment you fall into a hole, Kirby's just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then going on, uh, Valkyria Chronicles. This is one of my favorite... This is actually probably my favorite strategy RPG series of all time. I am playing through the first one on the Switch right now. Like, not this moment, obviously. I mean, I am in the middle of a stream. But this is one of the ones that I am currently, like, going through on the Switch. And at some point, I do want to at least try to do number four on stream at some point. Because it's the storyline for that one is a lot more interesting, in my opinion, than one. Even though one was kind of like the groundwork that set the tone for the series. But this one kind of like ties back to Azure Lane with the World War II kind of isk storyline. It's just... Uh, I'm a military veteran, so I do appreciate a good military story especially what one that shows just how grim and how well i guess wasteful war is i mean you look at war and what what do you get just a bunch of death you got death and death and oh yeah more death just War doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I had to serve in the Laputian military. It was kind of a requirement for us. But at the same time, though, it's just, well, I, I tended to prefer just, again, staying with my books rather than practicing my swordsmanship. Thankfully, I never actually got to see any battle before I allowed myself to fulfill my obligations and kind of just get out while the getting was good. But still, the being able to like see a story like Valkyria Chronicles that just shows you just how painful war can be, that's something that kind of hits you right in the feels. And it's something that I don't see in a lot of video games that I typically play. Like, you see it in stuff like Call of Duty, probably, and Gears of War and stuff like that. But that's kind of done on a more fantastical level, in my opinion. And then next on the list is another strategy RPG staple that's originated on the PS2. This guy. This guy was definitely one of my favorites from the PS2 era. Like, I would never even, like, heard of the series when it first came out. And I just saw the box art for the game, the original, on the PS2. And the whole box art kind of just sang to me. And when I ended up picking it up and played through it, it was almost love at first sight. Like, being able to go into this Final Fantasy Tactics-esque, like, style of gameplay and actually level your characters to the obscenely stupid and absurd levels that you can in this guy it's just it's a grinder for sure but it's a fun grinder like you have to grind to be able to get all of the stuff and hit all of the different dungeons and go to all the super bosses but eventually, like, you start doing such absurd amounts of damage that you can't help but just laugh and think, like, how did they get away with this? How did they get away with somebody being able to do, like, two billion points of damage in a single combo? It's, it's not something you see a whole lot of, but it's, it's a welcome change from the 
typical RPG where you kind of have a damage cap. Like, some of them will let you break the damage cap, like Octopath does that. There's a few Final Fantasy games that let you do that. Ten comes to mind. But you just don't see a whole lot of them that literally have no damage cap. Like, if you can just keep smashing them until they get to a point where the damage bar literally goes off the screen. It's like, let's just see how high we can get, take this. How high can this star go? And then another one of my favorites from the Switch. This one is actually a platformer. Kind of like Kirby. A hat in time. I definitely want to do a... I've already played through this one, but I do want to do a a replay of it for you guys. This one is just so cute and the story is just so amusing and interesting that it begs to be shared. It's it's one of those where it's got its moments where it it likes to try and be serious, but at the same time, you just can't help but not take it seriously. It's like the little kid that is trying to sit there and wear his daddy's suit and be like, I am a grown-up. And you're just sitting there watching this adorable little thing try to be all grown-up and serious, and you're just sitting there trying to hold in your laughter. That's basically what a hat in time feels like at times. <laughs> but then, as I was mentioning earlier, there's the Dot Hack series. This is one of like the premier games of my childhood, of my school years. This was definitely one of the one of the things that got me into like MMOs that as a like shut in high schooler. Like I wasn't really a aware of like what you could do with MMOs and then I find this simulated MMO called dot hack and then it kind of shows me just what kind of possibilities are actually out there for this style of game and this is this game is probably a big reason of why I play Final Fantasy 14 right now and why I'm having so much fun with it but the entire like dot hack like world is very interesting it harkens back to kind of like an almost irobot-esque kind of storyline where you have a sentient ai within the game that does things that no game has any business trying to do it's like it doesn't like suck you in the <laughs> But it does kind of harken back to like Sword Art Online, which kind of takes its cues from Dot Hack a little bit. In that you kind of go, some of the characters are comatose because if you get killed by certain monsters in the game in the Dot Hack universe, you go into a coma in real life. And that is actually part of what drives the main story in the original quadrilogy, which is one of the series I definitely plan on doing for you guys at some point. It's it's a bit of a grinder like some of these other ones, but it's nowhere near as bad as like say some of the Final Fantasy games or Disgaea. Like even Octopath Traveler has its grindy moments, but Dot Hack like at most you have to do some grinding just to like get your levels up or even just to like bring your own like corruption level because that's a thing in the game down by just killing rando monsters to make sure that you can actually get through the main dungeon of the storyline but this is kind of the stuff that I'm interested in and enjoy from the entertainment standpoint as far as anime and video games and then, as far as tag listings, like the general one, you obviously is like hashtag Alden Food Dry. I'm not really sure. I haven't come up with a t 
tag for when I start streaming, but I am kind of thinking about it. And then any art that you guys are interested in making, uh, the tag listing for that will be hashtag AldArt. Bit unoriginal, I know, but it was the best I could come up with on Shart and Ortis. <laughs> and then, as far as the fan name, like for you, the name to give you guys, there's a few options out there. Like the one I like the most is uh, Sparks. Because again, I am a Thunderbird. I do the whole lightning thing. Like a little purple Pikachu. <laughs> Just not a mouse. I'm a bird. And then... Kind of harkening back to my teaching days and my job now as the warden of knowledge, uh, the Philosophlock. It's a bit of a tongue twister almost, but that one kind of like stuck out to me when I was going over possible names. And then, like, obviously there's the bookworms. But if anyone has any, like, preferences, feel free to, like, tweet them to me or let me know like off stream and I'll definitely consider that. But again, I am kind of leaning towards sparks at the moment just because it's kind of theme appropriate and easy to say. <laughs> now, as far as future streams, like I said, this is going to be a bit more of a family friendly community. I do want everyone to be able to enjoy my content as scattered and fractured as it may be <laughs> but i do plan on doing a lot of video games a lot of rpgs platformers uh maybe the occasional tactical maybe some puzzle games i might consider doing some fps games i am not a big like uh player of the fps genre first person shooters for those of you who aren't gamers possibly but, again, it's something that I'm considering, but I haven't like quite made a actual decision on it yet. And it's not on the list, but I do want to play a lot of retro games. I did, like, rip some BIOS files from my old PS1 and PS2 that I was able to get. And I do want to, like, be able to share those classics that I have and be able to like play them for you guys and just show you how much I enjoyed them and like what games kind of just defined my childhood it's like one of the big ones it wasn't on my list earlier but it's like probably my favorite game on the PS1 was Legend of Lagaya. it's a cult classic I guess you would consider it now it wasn't that popular when it first came out, but it's gained traction over the years, despite its archaic graphics. But it was a very unique RPG, kind of mixed fighting elements in with the RPG and the story elements. But it was very fun. The story was engaging. The characters were unique and interesting. You actually like, got to see, like, how everything went down and how things were affected in the world as you progress through the story and that's something that I really want to share with you guys at some point and then uh, there will obviously be some just chatting streams where we kind of just take a few topics and kind of just run with it and then again as I mentioned earlier I am trying to learn German so I do want to consider doing some Duolingo lesson streams where I'm kind of just learning and going through my lessons on Duolingo and try to figure out <laughs> how to do things in German and how to speak German without sounding like a tourist, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and then I do want to do collabs in the future. I'm considering like there's a several people that I do w would love to do some collabs with in the future especially with games like Among Us and maybe some Uno haven't played Uno in a while that one would definitely be kind of fun especially if we can get like a four person collab going that would be amazing like do some one on one on one on one or even like a 2v2 two, two kind of 
battle team kind of thing. So that's definitely something. And then I am starting to get into drawing. I actually just picked up some basic equipment and I want to start learning how to draw. Like one of the things about me you'll find out really quick is that I have a overactive imagination. Like my my imagination can go into complete overdrive and I will start mumbling to myself on like various like storylines and whatnot that I may get for like potential future stories or books that I may want to like put on the back burner but it's something that drawing would basically allow me to kind of get <laughs> really project really <laughs> thank you for the head pat anyway <laughs> but Going back to that, uh, drawing is basically like something that I feel would allow me to let my imagination actually like take flight, as it were, to use a bird pun, so to speak, and kind of just give me the chance to put my ideas down on paper in a way that I can actually like express myself in a way that words just aren't sufficient for. So maybe at some point we might do some drawing streams in the future if I can ever get good as it were or if I can like basically get to a level where I'm not going to completely embarrass myself and get a actual like drawing tablet that I can hook up to my rig and just kind of see what what I can do and then yeah, art streams. Like I, I've seen a lot of VTubers of various types, like actually like do art streaming, and that's kind of what got me into the, the idea of hey, maybe I should like, you know, try to do this and see if I can actually build my talent in this. Do not expect any kind of singing streams though. Like I am horrible at singing. Like, the one time I tried back in my military days, my colleagues basically said, if you ever, ever do that again, we will tie you up with rubber straps, stick a gag in your mouth, and shove you off the island. So, yeah, let, let's not do that. I don't want to get shoved off the island. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, my singing is atrocious. I could prop... I could probably, like, shatter a mirror, like that old Nintendo DS game, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Me Meta Knight just, like, breaks the mirror into thousands of tiny shards. So, yeah, that would be me trying to sing. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Project. It is appealing to kind of watch an art piece unfold. It's one of the things I actually like about watching art streams, just seeing, like, how somebody, like, goes through the process and if they're, like, actually talking during it, like, it gives you an insight into their thoughts and what they're thinking as they're trying to bring their idea to life. So that's definitely something that appeals to me, really. And then, as far as goals for the stream, I... We're going to start small. I do kind of want to get... Uh, start out with getting, like, 200 followers on Twitch. I do want to try to get Twitch partner at some point. So right now we're just going to kind of work our way towards getting affiliate as a short-term goal. It's going to take some doing, I'm pretty sure, but it's going to, it's definitely like on the main list because I do want to like be able to make use of some emotes and stuff like that and actually like build a community where people can just have fun fun and just be themselves without anyone kind of like judging them for it though if you are rude we will judge you like I will judge you and then I will clock you with the gavel and that's before I ban you <laughs> so we again we don't want rudeness here we want to be a nice happy little family we want to have fun we want to do all sorts of crazy shenanigans 
and then we do kind of just want to like build each other up and just not make we want to make the world a better place is kind of what i want to do here like just provide a place for people to just like have fun just not worry about things and then it would be kind of cool as far as my goal rest of my goals to kind of join or create a vtuber group of our own like a little like indie group so to speak like those little indie bands that you use to that you like to listen to as a teenager when you're in your rebellious phase <laughs> Mm, I actually don't remember that project. I'd have to go back and look at that because I feel like I did read that somewhere, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. But that'll definitely be something to look into if I ever get to the point where I do like reach partner status. And then later on, I do want to become semi-fluent at least in one language, preferably German. I am considering, like, l trying to learn a, one or two others, at least becoming, like, moderately semi-fluent to just where I can hold, like, basic conversations. Like, I do want to learn a little bit of Italian. Like, and I'm not even, like, part Italian either. I just like the way the language sounds. Like, if you've ever heard someone singing in Italian, muy benissimo. Very beautiful. To listen to someone singing in Italian <laughs> and then this is a bit of a silly goal but I would like to have a community built up where people actually w might want to make fan art of me like it it seems a little like selfish and self-serving but I just am kind of interested in seeing what other people would like to how they would like to portray me in their art. So that would be very interesting and would be a neat little goal. It's like, you know you've made it when somebody actually like wants to draw you. And then as I mentioned before, I do want to create a fun, respectful community where people can kind of just be themselves and just make friends. We're, none of us are in the same place. We're all, we're from all corners of the world in Again, this is the Hall of Knowledge. This is a repository of information, of learning. Maybe if we can all learn something new every day, it's something that we can kind of build together. And then kind of outside of streaming, my goal is I definitely do want to finish the first draft of my novel. It's something that I've been trying to work towards for a while now. And like I have like school issues that have been kind of taking up my time. Work obviously is taking up a lot of my time, but I do want to get back into like doing a semi regular writing schedule to finish my first draft of my book so that I can actually like start editing it and seeing if I can put it out there and get someone to maybe publish it. Maybe in the future, some of our just chatting streams can be just like sharing writing ideas and maybe you guys can maybe give me some ideas and inspiration for future stories because I do like writing short stories, even if they do kind of take away a little time from my novel, but they are fun to write and they give me an, I, an exercise and actually being able to condense things into a shorter time frame as it were so it, it's definitely a good way of practicing f uh, my writing craft and as far as like the inspirations that I've had for actual streaming like the big ones are like obviously like Takanashi Kiara from Hollow Live like she and Gargura are like the the two ones who got me like down the rabbit hole to start with like Kiara was a big inspiration for me as a as a becoming a Thunderbird and being this type of like VTuber and Gura is just one of those 
She's one of those streamers that you just cannot help but love no matter how much of a gremlin she is. Like, she's just one of those people that kind of gives off that fun vibe, and that's kind of the same vibe that I want to give off as a streamer and during my content. And then from our friends at Niji Sanji, uh, Mr. Rias is a big inspiration for me as far as just like the kind of content I would like to do and just like the sheer his attitude like the way he just like interacts with his fans him and Luca Kaneshiro both are both just amazing when it comes to like interacting with their fans and just building a community of like-minded people and that's something that I am really inspired by and want to work towards in the future. Uh, as far as live streamers, a big one I enjoy is Z-Royal Viking. He's famous for like his Among Us streams. That's kind of how I kind of got like into Among Us in the first place was watching his streams. And he is... The, the amount of chaos he and his lobbies cause in that game is... Like, not only is it inspirational, but for me as a lover of comedy, but it also is just, this is what entertainment should be. Like, just friends having fun. Like, that's the thing that I get when I watch Z and all of his friends streaming, whether it's, like, Town of Salem or Among Us or any other games. You just get an idea of, like, these guys are actually having fun. And that's what I want to build. Like, that's the kind of collabs that I want to do in the future is just having fun and enjoying ourselves, playing the game, and just being friends is really it. And then, uh, who can forget Iron Mouse? Iron Mouse, like, again, I'm not going to be doing the singing streams. I'm horrible at it. And it would probably take more than a fortune in voice lessons to get me to a level where I am not completely tone deaf. But Iron Mouse, like her singing streams are pretty amazing. Her general content is amazing. And just like the way that she has built herself up despite her personal like complications in her actual life. It's just that is, like, inspiration right there. Like, Iron Mouse is the the standard bearer for what VTubers can do, like, if they actually, like, put in the work and actually try to interact with the fans and just be the best person that they can be. And that is something that I really can appreciate and can get behind. So I do want to thank each of these VTubers, they probably never ever see this stream, but I do want to like give that shout out to them as thanks for kind of being the ones to lead me to this point and give me that inspiration to just get out there and try to throw my hat in the ring at doing this. <laughs> so thank you, all of you. And a special thanks to several VTubers that are a little bit on the smaller side compared to the biggies that I just went over, but I wanted to thank Mara Mizu and her community. Project is definitely a good friend of mine from that community. And just Mara herself is an amazing streamer. She's very entertaining. She's very sweet. It's just, she's one of those people that just makes you feel at home. Like you're just sitting down and just enjoying <laughs> enjoying a good round of chat or just playing a silly game with the fr with your friends and then uh, punk wolf is, she's a good friend of mine and she's been very kind and supportive of me this entire time leading up to this so a big shout out to her and she's also like done some good fun collabs that I've watched with like her friends uh, Ninja Kai and all those folks so being able to watch them 
stream is always a blast and just watching how they interact with each other is real fun. And then Alf Hilde is a big inspiration for me as far as like my just chatting streams, how I want them to go. She's very personable, very easy to get along with. She's very good at actually like interacting with her fans and just like coming up with these random topics seemingly that just you wonder how in the world it segued into the conversation that is going on. But at the same time, you're just like, yeah, I can roll with this. This this is actually going to be a fun time. So, yeah, she's also been a good friend to me, and I definitely want to give a big shout out to her for being supportive and for just being there and just being a good friend, being a good content creator, and just making a community that actually, like, where people from all over the world can just meet up and just kind of shoot the stuff, so to speak. And then Master Samari is a good friend of mine. He's one of the first followers that I had on Twitter and Twitch. And he's kind of been with me since the beginning. So big shout out to him. I haven't seen him on as much lately, but I know he's probably got some other personal stuff to deal with, but he's still out there and he is going to be debuting himself in the near future. So I definitely hope to, enjoy that whenever he actually gets out there and starts streaming and then as far as credits go uh definitely want to give a big hurrah to the house of a magi studio they're the ones who helped me design this avatar and they're the ones that actually do a lot of my commissions for my storybook characters a lot of my characters that i have commissioned art of from my books. Like this is the studio that is behind their designs and they have done an amazing job. And I don't think my stories would be anywhere near as complete as they are without them to kind of bring my ideas to life. And they're a big reason of why I kind of want to start getting into drawing as well. <laughs> And then several Fiverr freelancer artists are on this list. Uh, Bueca Art is kind of like my VTuber avatar's mama and papa at the same time. She did my two, live 2D model and the rigging. I am hoping to eventually like save up enough to where I can get some advanced rigging on this model and kind of upgrade it in the future. But that's neither here nor there that's kind of a little bit down the road but it is something i want to at least save up to maybe get some money saved up to possibly if it if i can actually save up enough to get an like an iphone x or something that allows me to do like really good tracking that would be amazing but again I, that's going to be a little bit ways down the road uh Bitterness Suite is the one who's responsible for, like, my logo and such. M many thanks to Bitterness Suite for actually, like, taking the time to create this awesome logo for me. Uh, Muski is the one who created my theme that was on my uh, starting soon uh, label so that's definitely something I appreciate them for we'll probably at some point actually sit down and have it play in the background probably for the next just chatting stream just so you guys can kind of hear it and then uh, Predaster is the one who's responsible for my overlays they actually did a really good job with this overlay and I love it and they did an amazing job just based off of the vague references that I was able to give them. So shout out to them and many thanks. And then lastly, uh, 
T. Fanny Ra is actually an artist that I've commissioned in the past to do some work. And she actually did a cute little chibi uh, artwork of me that I'll probably be posting on my Twitter in the near future. So I wanted to give a shout out to her and just like say thank you to each and every one of these folks for like helping me build this channel to this level and just get it to the point where I can actually be here today and share this with you. But overall, it's been fun being here to just kind of introduce myself to you all and just, you know, kind of get this started and let you all know where things are going to be going in the near future. But I do appreciate each of you for being here. Many thanks. <laughs> Much love. And I do appreciate the fact that you're actually here with me today. I am going to be looking at my schedule for the next like week and a half and seeing like when I can possibly get another stream in because again we do have I do have work to consider and there is the whole matter of like finishing up my education I do thankfully have that almost in the bag like I have sitting here like you have to have a degree to actually get a good job in on the surface world. It's like, I'm a former professor. Does this not qualify? Do I not get metal for the whole life experience thing? But nope, I actually do have to get my degree and thankfully that is almost a foregone conclusion. So that actually means that I should have more time to sit down and scream for you guys. But as far as like what we're gonna be doing in the in the very near future, I do want to at least get started on one game at the very least. I'm kind of torn whether I want to do uh, RFL for my first game or if I want to do uh, uh, Ease Memories of Selketa. Those are probably like the two big ones that are sitting there on my on the top of my list like there if there's other stuff on steam that you want to consider then feel free to like dm me on twitter with your suggestions or let me know because i always appreciate like recommendations and such haro i haven't heard of that one i'll have to look into that but definitely do like send me your suggestions and stuff. I do appreciate like being given suggestions. Once we do start gaming though, like do try to keep the backseat gaming to a minimum. Like if there's something that's like bamboozling me then and I ask for help, then please, by all means, help out. But for the most part, most of these games, at least the Steam and uh, <laughs> Switch ones, more than likely, I'm going to be doing, like, my first run through. So, I'm going to essentially be playing blind. So, if I do, like, have some issues, I may ask for some help. If... <laughs> oh, so you were saying hello. <laughs> Got a bit of an accent there, Project. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, anyway... We do want to keep the backseat gaming to a minimum just because I do want to kind of learn these games as I go. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting. I can already tell there's probably going to be like one or two games on my list to play that are probably going to be a little frustrating. Like I have considered like doing Jump King and I've heard horror stories about how frustrating that game is. But at the same time, though, it's one of those games that I look at it and it's like, oh, this seems like a pretty good challenge. Let's see how long it takes before I finally snap. But anyway, thank you all for coming. I do like the fact that you all were able to be here. And again, I am looking forward to like spending more time with all of you and actually building this community and I will be 
hopefully putting out a schedule before Sunday on <laughs> on what I want to do possibly next week because I do have some ideas. I just got to make sure that they fit into my schedule. But again, thank you all for being here. Thank you all so much for your support. And I am looking forward to seeing you all again in the future. Hope you all have a nice day. And thank you.